Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Guess what? We're doing art today. Um, we are separate and this isn't going to be fancy, but it is going to be fun. So today we are learning about the artist named Philip Taff. Um, he's American. He is still alive, which is not always true about our artists that we learn about. And um, he, he's just really cool because he uses a lot of different techniques. So let's jump in and learn a little bit about uh, Philip Taff. Okay, so our man Philip is American. He is from the state of New Jersey. So let's see if we can find this New Jersey on a map. Philip was also born in the year 1955. So if we just do some simple math, we take our current year of 2020 and we subtract his birthday, which was 1995. How old is our man Philip Taff? <laughs> Yeah, if you did the math, he is 65 years old, so not not really old at all. Um, and his art is currently in quite a few museums. He's in MoMA, which is the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Um, he's in the Philadelphia Art Museum, um, the Whitney Museum of Art, so quite a few, which is really cool. And our friend Philip Taff, um, he gets a lot of his inspiration actually from Middle Eastern culture and, um, and a lot of Asia actually also since he traveled there quite a bit. So let's um, talk a little bit about the techniques we'll be using and also what supplies we'll be using and let's get started on some art. Alright, so the first piece of artwork that we're going to focus on today is called Konya um, by Philip Taff. And it is um, a triangular piece that is made up of dipped paper. And then on top of that dipped paper is a um, screen print of an arabesque kind of design. So if you are from Ben's Hope, then we've talked about arabesque before. Um, and that is simply patterns of lines intertwine that some how mimic nature and that does come from the Middle East. Um, Um, now, the dipped paper technique that we're going to use today isn't exactly um, how it's done in real life, but it is an easy thing that we can replicate sort of um, from home and that is called Arizo uh, Megami. Arizo Megami. Um, and this is actually Japanese and what it means is that you are folding paper and then dipping it in an ink. Um, so we'll go over how we're gonna do that today. Um, and those are just the two techniques that he uses in this artwork. Um, he is a multimedia artist, so um, if we break down the word multimedia, what do you think it means? Do you think multimedia means that people just use, it's a person who just uses one technique in art? Or um, is multimedia someone who uses different techniques? I'll let you think about that for a second. Okay, so for our first project, the supplies we'll need are either some just white paper um, coffee filters or I believe some um, paper towel will probably be just fine also. We'll need a um, container of water, which I think you can see like that. Um, we'll need some cardboard, some 
light colored acrylic paint. Um, doesn't have to be white, like yellow would work fine. Um, pink, just something light colored. I just had white on hand. Um, we'll need some markers. I have permanent markers simply because it's all that I have, um, but I would recommend using washable markers um, just in case so you don't get it anywhere on your clothes or anything. You'll need a good pair of scissors, um, a damp sponge, some cardstock or really, really thin cardboard like from a LaCroix box or um, construction paper, something that's a little sturdier than your typical um, printer paper. And then you also want a cup. And I think also a pen, which I don't have here, but an ink pen or a pencil, I think would be helpful also. All right, since we know that multimedia does mean that we're using different techniques, let's start with the first one. And that's gonna be our Rizzo Megami. So like I mentioned, um, it's from Japan and it simply means folding paper um, and then dipping in ink. So what we're gonna use right now is our paper filters, um, our markers, and also our um, container of water. So let's get those ready. So the way I originally wanted you guys to do it was to take your paper filter or your paper towel, fold it in quarters, and then I wanted you to take marker and draw your colors however you want it on there, and then dip it in water. I used permanent marker and it doesn't bleed. So it did nothing, really. <laughs> um, so washable markers should bleed and should work perfectly for this. So if you're using washable markers, which I recommended anyway, that should work. However, I don't have any for some reason. I have every art supply but washable markers. So what I've done is take just little bits of water um, in dishes and then pop out a few watercolor um, cakes and stick them in the water, let them dissolve, and now I have ink to dip in. Um, another thing you could simply do is just um, wet watercolor and then use watercolor on your folded paper and just dab it around to make designs. So that's something you could do. Um, or if you want to fold it and then dip it, it's another thing you could do um, if you have the ink like this. But again, if you are just using... Um, some washable markers, then I would just simply color your, fold your paper, then color and then dip it in water and it should bleed like that. So after you have a design um, and you've dipped it, we're just gonna open it up and lay it to dry somewhere sunny um, so that um, we'll eventually have a dry paper. So I have one that's almost dry here that looks like this. This is the one we just did, looks super transparent. Um, but as it dries, it will darken up a little bit too. So we're just going to keep doing that. I would say do that with maybe 12 um, of these filters, maybe a little bit less. Um, but let's start with that. <laughs> All right, the next step is going to be um, simply to take your cardboard and draw a triangle on it. So I've already kind of pre-done that for you guys here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is my hand just kind of as a reference for how big it is. You can make yours as big or as small as you want. We are just gonna be covering them in our um, paper filters. So um, however many paper filters you made, you wanna make sure that um, they can cover the distance of your triangle. So after we draw it out, we're gonna cut it out. So I'll do that next. All right, now that we have our triangle, I'm gonna use my cardstock, which I know it's the same color, so it's kind of confusing, um, but I'm gonna make a small triangular um, template, ideally. So you're gonna make a tiny triangle, um, from our triangle that we just cut out. So I am just gonna mark, I'm gonna draw a line here. I'm gonna kinda use this side here as just a natural line. And then mark where I want to connect them. So I know this lighting's not the best, because I'm coming in the window, but I know it's not the best line, but there we go like that. It doesn't need to be perfect because again, this is just a template. Um, and I'm gonna cut this out. 
All right, so um, now that our filters are dry, which I actually was impatient and used a blow dryer to dry them, which actually worked really well. So if you have that handy and you're trying to speed up the process. Uh, all right, so I tried recording this earlier, but I ran out of storage, so we're gonna try it again. Um, what to do now? So you take all of your dried um, filters that you've colored. This one is just white because I used all the other ones already. So um, take all the ones that you've colored and stack them all on top of each other. Then all together, fold them into a quarter like this. Not as easy one-handed like that. Then you're gonna take your template. That's the first time we use this. We're gonna use it again though, so don't throw it away. Um, and we're gonna outline this and then cut it out. And what it gives you is a bunch of beautiful colored triangles. From there, we are simply going to arrange them however we'd like to cover up our big triangle. So just pick your favorite ones. Um, this one has more red in it. This one has more blue. So I'm going to put them by each other. I'm just going to rearrange them. We want it all covered, so you don't want to see any of the cardboard underneath. Um, it's okay if they overlap. And if you have some hanging off the edges, you can cut that off. So I would first arrange them, and then we'll glue them down, and then we'll trim from there. Okay, so now I have covered a lot of my triangle in these small triangles. Um, there was too much space at the bottom, not enough to add another row of triangles, so I think I'm just going to cut that off, and then we will be ready for our next step. All right, and this is the completed project, so this is our rendition um, of our artist's work. Okay, so if you're interested in doing one more piece by Philip Taff, um... The last one, second and last one we'll do today um, is called Altarpiece, and that one's actually a very recent one from 2018. Um, and I think the name Altarpiece is interesting. Um, typically, Altarpieces are pieces of art that are on an altar of a church. And this piece of artwork is um, a painting that has a really abstract background and then has pictures of different foods and flowers um scattered around it as well as um some prints of different kind of looks like plants and clouds um but everything is definitely from the earth in this piece so i think that is the focal point um maybe it has something to do with creation i'm not exactly sure um but i think it's a cool piece i think it's fun to do it's a little less complex um than our last piece by him and yeah so let's get started. All right, so what we're gonna need for this project is gonna be some more cardstock. Um, and then we can reuse this um, stencil that we used from our last project. Um, we'll need some watercolor again, a paintbrush, um, some watercolor paper. I am just reusing an old one that I had um, that has some paint on it, but a plain one um, without anything on it is perfect. We'll need some white paint again, some glue, um, scissors, our sponge, and then the last thing would be some magazines that have food or flowers or plants in it. So for my people at Benso, I think we can get it from the greenhouse because we have a bunch of our seed magazines there. For me, I like to cook a lot and I have a lot of Bon Appetit magazines, so that's what I'll use today. Um, if you're at home, you can also just print out some pictures of flowers and, um, and vegetables, but a magazine is kind of a fun one to um, look through, so. Okay, so the first step of our project is going to be covering our paper in just really abstract blotches of color. Um, there's no right or wrong just covering your whole page in a bunch of color. So I, this I did a long time ago, and I'm just now going to try to cover the whole page with blotches of color like that. So this is how my uh, background turned out. Again, just covered it in all different colors, just blobs of different 
shades. Um, and now I'm just gonna let it dry. And our next step is to go through our magazines and cut out our pictures. Um, so we'll do that. And then we can also make different stencils out of our cardstock, and they can be any size and shape um, with any design in the middle, whatever you choose. Um, we do wanna focus on this piece being a lot of shapes you might find in nature. Um, so more organic shapes like this are a good option, um, less geometric shapes. So the veggies I found in my magazines were mostly mushrooms. Um, tomatoes are my favorite vegetable, so I did find some pictures of those. And then the only real plants other than um, veggies that I found were herbs. So I cut some of those out to add some green. And now we're just gonna paste these onto our background. All right, so now that we have glued on our veggies, it's over here, it's a little easier to see, onto our background, the next step will be to use our stencil to just in random spots make some little prints. So I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. Don't think it's gonna go that well, but. <laughs> nope. We're just going to try to get that in there. That's not exactly what we were looking for. I think I will have to use two hands, but we're going to keep doing that all over. And I do think I'm going to make one or two more of these so I just have some variety and do that also all over. So I'll check back with you guys when I'm done with that. Okay, so these are the stencils I ended up making to add to my piece. And this is my final product. So this is my rendition of the altar piece. Um, if anyone at home or at Ben's Hope made these projects, I would love if you sent me the pictures of them, because I'm just curious what they all look like. I'm pretty proud of mine. I actually really like both of them. Um, and yeah, I would just like to see what you guys made. So, thanks for being with me today. Um, love hanging out with you. Love ha making art with you guys. Um, wish I could be in there making art with you. So hopefully when this is all over, we'll be together again. But in the meantime, um, thanks for making art with me. Okay, bye guys.